Hey guys, Revamp here and I am here. As you're aware, the holidays are coming up and gift boxes are very expensive. So what I ended up doing was building my own gift boxes. I added some lights to them. It's not as cool as, <laughs> I know it doesn't sound that cool, but um, it actually looks really nice. So I'm just going to show you some examples and then I'm going to show you how I made it. See, I, uh, I was able to do flashing colors, um, smooth colors, and a solid color. You can pretty much do whatever you want, and I'm going to be going through step by step how I did it. It still was a little pricey, but it was a lot cheaper than buying a light-up box if they even sell them, which I'm sure they do. But also, this is a this is a fun, easy project. I made it a little more complicated than it had to be, but there's easier ways to do it. First thing you're going to want to do is get everything out of the box. Next, you're going to want to take an LED bulb that you can change the colors with. It doesn't really matter the brand. I went with Yang, and we're going to start taking it apart. Every bulb is a little different. Some screw off. This one, you got to pop off the lid. Next, we're going to unscrew the board from the bulb. See, not so hard, is it? Uh, this part, we're going to be cutting out. This is actually an AC transformer. We're not going to need it because we're not going to be doing anything with AC current. However, if you're into tinkering, I recommend keeping it because it's good if you do any AC projects. Just a quick side note, AC stands for alternating current, not air conditioning. All I'm doing here is wiping off the grease. It's useful, but it will get all over your fingers as you're trying to work with it. For this next part, don't play around with anything. I was going to show you everyone how an IR receiver works, and I ripped it clean off the board. Yep. That was a real pain in the neck. So what this does is it allows you to change the color of the light. So as you can see, the remote is not going to work with it. So now you'd have to expose copper traces and resolder the component to the copper traces. I'm not going to get into this. I don't end up keeping this board, but generally that's how you would do it. Now I'm just going to clean away the extra rosin, but uh even then, it's really not the best job, but it's in theory, that's how you would fix that problem. Okay, this is a whole new board, but I did the same steps. This is how it's supposed to work. Now all I'm going to do is take the wires off. All I really care about is the red and the black. However, I will take off their red and black wires and put on my own. Longer and stronger. That is mildly inappropriate. You're going to constantly see testing because you don't want to put everything together and then find out you messed up somewhere. We're going to be using single pole double throw switches. I recently was given a lot of them and didn't need them till this project. I just have to make sure the wires are on the correct contacts for this. I'm just trying to see where the light's going to go on the box now. Nothing, not committing yet, not getting married to this box, but uh, it's good to have an idea. I'm going to make the hole a little bigger on the housing so the screw can go through. I think this is the first time you've ever seen me actually use power tools on camera. Again, I'm going to go see where I want this in the box and start trying to make a mark so I know where to drill. These stepper bits are amazing and they make this process a lot easier. And we're finally going to mount the light. I'll put a little cap on it and it's fitting in nicely. Make sure it closes and you see it's kind of inconspicuous. Okay, maybe it's a little noticeable, but it looks nice at least, right? All right, maybe it doesn't, but but it's in the box. Before joining these wires, make sure the sleeves are on. This is a mistake I make every single time I need to use sleeves. And uh, before soldering in place completely, always test circuits. These are things I've learned the hard way. We are now melting the shrink wrap, shrinking it. You are using a wooden box and a high heat gun. So do not, do not keep it in one spot or the box can possibly catch on fire. So make sure you have water, Red Bull, or fire extinguisher, something that can put it out. And I'm going to test it again because, like I said, you can never test it too many times. And right, look at that. And now we're ready to start filling the box up. Um, as you're going to see, one bottle is not going to fit. I didn't really plan that one through. But at least the box closes and it works. And like I said, all you see is the little cap sticking out over there. Not bad. 